So thank God the governor of Wisconsin has more leadership than Joe Biden. But the unemployment rate, we saw the grim news coming out during the coronavirus pandemic. The unemployment rate, the New York Times reports, even though on paper it went up to 4.4%, it's really around 13% right now already. It's almost certainly at its highest level since the Great Depression. The jobless rate today is almost certainly higher than at any point since the Great Depression. We think it's around 13% and rising at a speed unmatched in American history. The labor market is changing so fast that our official statistics intended to measure changes over months and years rather than days or weeks. They can't keep up. But a, sim but a few simple calculations can help piece together a reasonable approxim approximation. Be warned, these numbers yield an imp imprecise estimate of today's unemployment rate, and the truth could easily be quite a lot higher or lower. This is not an estimate of the official unemployment rate for March, which reports the state of the economy a few weeks ago when the labor market was in better shape, nor is it a forecast of the official rate in April. The Labor Department reported on Thursday that around 9 million people had filed for unemployment insurance over the past two weeks. By contrast, in a healthy economy, fewer than half a million people would have done so. So I'm not going to read this whole thing because we don't have enough time. But the bottom line is the New York Times, through whatever wonky, geeky research they do, says, no, no, the unemployment rate realistically right now is closer to 13 percent. Well, if over 10 million people, if over 10 million people have lost their health insurance, that would mean a whole lot of people are losing, excuse me, a whole lot, uh, if over 10 million people have lost their jobs, that would mean a whole lot of people are losing their health insurance. You wanna know how many people? Uh, this is a study from HMA, uh, which is part of the government, uh, I believe the government Medicaid office. They are estimating, HMA has estimated how the economic downturn primarily driven by the COVID-19 pandemic could impact enrollment in Medicaid, the Affordable Care Act, marketplaces, employer-sponsored coverage, as well as the potential change in the number of uninsured individuals. Given the current uncertainty of the U.S. economy, we have included three scenarios representing various publicly reported estimates of the potential increase in the U.S. unemployment rate. We intend to update our model more as more information becomes available. So the pre-COVID unemployment rate, if you could see that, 3%. Now their estimate and the uninsured was about 30 million people pre-coronavirus, right? So they give estimates for as the unemployment rate goes up. So their estimate for if unemployment is at 10%, which it's 100% going to go that high, they're saying the uninsured in health insurance is going to rise to between 30 and 31 million people. They're saying if unemployment goes up to 17.5%, which there are estimates saying unemployment can go as high as 30%. Obviously, these are all estimates right now. Basically, they're estimating here that if the unemployment rate goes up to 17.5%, uninsured in America might go up to 35 million. If the unemployment rate goes up to 25%, which again, Google it, there's reports saying the unemployment rate could go up as high as 30%, depending on how long this coronavirus pandemic goes on. They're estimating potentially 40 million people could be uninsured. That doesn't even take into account the underinsured in America. We're just talking straight uninsured, not people who have health insurance but can't afford it because of the high deductibles, co-pays. With that in mind, you would think a presidential candidate would jump, would jump. We need, we need Medicare for all right now. We can't, we can't have this. We can't have employer-sponsored health care. 
uh, it, this is showing why it is insane to have health care tied to your employer. You can't have it. However, and by the way, the World Health Organization today, the director of the WHO, the World Health Ex Organization, basically said as much. Take a listen. There are three main areas for countries to focus on. First, we call on all countries to ensure core public health measures are fully funded, including case finding, testing, contact tracing, collecting data, and communication and information campaigns. Second, we also call on countries and partners to strengthen the foundations of health systems. That means health workers must be paid their salaries and health facilities need a reliable supply of funding to purchase essential medical supplies. Third, we call on all countries to remove financial barriers to care. If people delay or forego care because they can't afford it, they not only harm themselves, they make the pandemic harder to control and put society at risk. You heard it right there. That's the director of the WHO. Joe Biden says, I listen to the experts. Well, the expert is telling you, not only does every government in the world have to provide fully funded public health care, call it whatever you want, single payer, Medicare for all, whatever, fully funded public health care right now. But if they don't, it is going to further spread the virus. You have the World Health Organization is literally telling, telling leaders, not only is it the right thing to do uh, for governments to fund uh, health care and cover their people, but this is the way we will slow down the coronavirus pandemic. If we do not provide full coverage, if we do not provide for our citizens full health care, People are not going to go to the hospital because they, if they don't have health insurance, uh, and people, and there are people that do have health insurance that can't afford it because of the copays and deductibles. They are telling you, by you, Joe Biden, they might have not said his name, but by you, by you, listening, the experts he's listening to are on Wall Street and the people lining his pockets and his campaign, funding his campaign, but. By listening to those people instead of me, the World Health Organization, by listening to the donors and Wall Street and the pharmaceutical industry and the private health insurance industry, by listening to them, people are going to die because they can't go to the emergency room. They're afraid to go to the doctor because they don't want to bankrupt themselves. So they're not going to go even if they have the symptoms of shortness of breath, of a bad cough, of a fever. And more people are going to die. That's what the World Health Organization is saying. Well, I guess doesn't matter, according to what Joe Biden said just the other day. Because as you've been seeing, our health care system seems to be crumbling underneath this crisis. There is not enough. There's not enough support for the health care system. There's not enough support for the American people inside of the health care system. Are you now reconsidering your position when it comes to single payer health care? Single payer will not solve that at all. The thing that is needed is, for example, we have a whole number of hospitals that are being so stretched, including rural hospitals, they're going to need more financing. That doesn't come from a single payer system. That comes from the federal government stepping up and dealing with the concerns that they have, the reimbursement that they're going to get, how they're going to be able to move forward, and how they're going to be able to make, provide all the needed help that are needed in their community. Joe Biden is literally saying, when asked by the anchor, Medicare for all wouldn't solve the problem. Medicare for all, single payer, wouldn't solve the problem here. What's needed is the federal government to step up, for the federal government to step up and make sure the hospitals have the funding they need. But single payer wouldn't solve anything. He's either a moron or just a filthy, filthy liar. Probably a mix of both. Wait a minute. 
the federal government, the federal government to step up and fund the hospitals? That's, that is single payer. That's what Medicare for all would do. The government would be the single payer. The government would be the ones providing the funding where necessary to hospitals. It's just unbelievable. You mean to tell me that over 10 million people, over 10 million people have filed unemployment. It's probably going to get up anywhere from 15 to 20 million pretty soon. And a government healthcare system that guarantees them healthcare, it wouldn't help. Joe Biden is either very, very stupid or very, very corrupt because he knows damn well that the only thing that will help those people right now is guaranteed health care from the government. And somebody on Twitter said to me, well, that wouldn't fix the capacity issue, Jordan. The doctors can't see that. They can't see the patients right now. Yeah, if you're not bowling over dying, the di- you would have less of a chance to be seen. But I just emailed my, one of my, a doctor of mine, and I have an appointment on Monday. It's not in person. It's one of these telemedicine things. So... Yeah, you can be seen even during the coronavirus pandemic. And by the way, if, if um, for the people getting laid off now who have no health insurance, again, if they start getting coronavirus symptoms, how many of them are going to go to the emergency room if they don't have insurance and they are not willing to bankrupt themselves? How many of them are going to roll the dice and say, you know what? I hear a lot of people are just self-quarantining themselves and beating this. I'll just try to last. I'll, I'll try to fight it at home. It is intellectu- intellectually absurd and dishonest to claim Medicare for all would not solve the problem. It wouldn't solve everything. It certainly wouldn't have stopped the coronavirus from coming. A competent president would have stopped the coronavirus from having this level of impact. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.